Welcome back everyone. Today I have something uh, new to show, uh, which is a, a dynamic spin balancer. Uh, this wasn't a project I was expecting to undertake, but a convergence of needs to uh, balance high speed spinning objects occurred uh, between the uh, streamliner and 3D printed turbo compressor projects. And I can tell you from experience now that there is nothing scarier or frankly more dangerous than the unbalanced uh, spinning mass at 25,000 RPM. So just a quick introduction into how to balance a spinning mass. Um, the first and most rudimentary way of balancing a spinning mass is called uh, static balancing. Static balancing involves uh, just mounting the object to be balanced to a low friction bearing and using gravity to let the heavy side of the object rotate to the bottom. Uh, the biggest shortcoming of this approach is that the weight of the imbalance has to overcome the friction in the bearings. Um, this approach tends to work well for heavier objects that are spinning at uh, lower speeds. Um, I tried using a cheap uh, radio control plane uh, prop balancer like this, uh, but I quickly realized uh, this works much better for longer objects like propellers. Um, with my relatively lightweight and small diameter parts, I just didn't have uh, the weight to overcome the friction. So moving on, the second way to balance a spinning mass is called dynamic balancing. If you've ever had your tires change, uh, you've most likely seen the shop mount your tires to a large machine that spins the wheels up to a few hundred RPM and then tells the tech exactly where and how much weight to add to the wheel. Um, these machines are called dynamic balancers. Um, the biggest advantage of a dynamic balancer is you remove friction from the equation and you spin them at higher speeds, which uh, magnifies the smallest uh, weight imbalance. It can also do some more advanced things, uh, but I'll touch on this later. Um, now, precision dynamic balancers are typically fairly expensive machines, but as microcontrollers and cheap sensors from cell phones have become readily available, it's entirely possible to build your own uh, dynamic balancer. In fact, uh, I found my inspiration for this uh, dynamic balancer um, from a project by Cyborg CNC on the RC Groups uh, forum where he used an accelerometer and a photo sensor to measure the imbalance in uh, RC plane propellers. And I really liked his concept. Uh, so I designed this relatively simple machine. Um, there's a base and a top, which are held together by some flexible uh, TPU isolators. Uh, on top, I've uh, mounted a small brushless motor that will spin the uh, object to be balanced. Uh, to measure the speed and angle of the motor, I started off using a simple Hall effect sensor. Um, this particular motor has 14 poles and thus uh, 14 alternating uh, north-south magnets around the outside. Um, the Hall sensor is only triggered by the north poles, so the Hall sensor will trigger seven times per rotation. Um, but I have my interrupts in Arduino set to trigger on change, so I actually get 14 events per rotation. Uh, knowing this, we can very accurately measure the rotation angle of the motor by first counting the number of pulses that have occurred and multiplying this uh, by the degrees between the uh, poles, in this case 360 degrees divided by 14, or 25.7 degrees per uh, pole. Um, then the last partial portion of the angle is derived by measuring the time since the last pulse and the average pulse length from the previous rotation times 25.7 degrees. And that'll give us the portion of that last uh, pole that's actually already passed. Um, this is the exact same way the angle of rotation is going to be computed in a modern uh, computer controlled engine. Uh, usually via the data from the uh, crank angle sensor. Ideally, I'd use the motor directly from the streamliner, uh, which has space to mount the hall sensor, um, but that thing is just far too powerful and a little bit scary. So now we can uh, precisely measure the motor's angle. How do we actually measure the imbalance itself? Well, that's where a cheap MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit comes in. Um, these little sensors are actually very sensitive to small accelerations. Um, I've mounted uh, one of these directly below the motor so that the MP6050 chip itself is directly aligned with the uh, axis of rotation of the motor. Um, initially, I'm only utilizing the Y-axis accelerometer to measure the vibrations, uh, which is oriented towards the uh, zero mark on the balancer top plate. Um, basically, if you uh, 
make the y-axis accelerometer our point of reference, uh, denoted by this uh, dashed line in the picture, and the imbalance as a point on a circle that is spinning. Uh, when you graph the uh, magnitude of the y-axis accelerometer readings versus the angle of the motor, um, you should get a nice sine wave, albeit probably with some noise. Um, the upper peak of that sine wave will be the point where the y-axis accelerometer experienced the greatest positive acceleration and thus is perfectly aligned with the imbalance in the spinning object. And conversely, the lowest point in the sine wave will be 180 degrees out of phase from the heaviest point of the spinning object. For my purposes, this is really all I need to know right now. I know the angle where the imbalance is located, and I know a relative unitless magnitude of the amount of the imbalance. So to control all these electronics, the sensors are hooked up to an ESP32, which is connected via serial to my laptop. Uh, I have an LED mounted on the balancer, which flashes when the balancer is aligned at the motor zero point. As I spin the motor, when the LED flashes once, I've reached the first north magnetic pole and the zero point has been set. I then spin the motor one more rotation which triggers the software to begin a balancing run. The software automatically runs the motor at around 6,000 rpm and measures the highest acceleration reading and angle for each of 1,000 rotations. Now the accelerometers in the MP6050 can only be sampled at 1 kilohertz, um, but at 6,000 RPM, that means there are only going to be 10 samples per revolution. I mean, ideally, I'd use a lower kV motor to spin slower or a faster sampling accelerometer. But with 1,000 rotations, that all will fall within roughly a 36 degree or so area and a corresponding acceleration magnitude, um, I can approximate the location of the balance to less than a few degrees, so that's more than close enough for my purposes. Now I mentioned that the uh, LED is the zero alignment indicator for the motor. So to locate the imbalance, I rotate the motor by hand counterclockwise, since that's the direction the motor rotates, until the LED lights up. And from there, because the motor rotated again counterclockwise, I go X degrees counterclockwise, and I will find the heaviest point and 180 degrees from that is going to be the lightest point. Then I can just add or remove weight and rerun the test until I minimize the average uh, peak acceleration values. Now, we can never be perfect because there will always be you know, some noise from the environment and the motors, um, but it does appear to be extremely accurate. Um, it can easily detect a three to four millimeter piece of masking tape, which is gonna be less than a few grams um, as an imbalance. So what else could be done with this in the future? Well, obviously we could use better accelerometer, uh, improve the filtering, and use a user interface, uh, which could provide some additional configurability. But uh, for my needs right now, this is more than adequate. Um, I have found that uh, if something is really out of balance, it's best to first statically balance the mass and then use the dynamic balancer. Um, even then at 6,000 RPM, uh, can be a little bit too rough and I might have to actually decrease the sensitivity of the accelerometer uh, from 4G to 8Gs. Uh, otherwise, I just max out the accelerometer at every angle. I mentioned uh, before that there are more functions that a dynamic uh, spin balancer can have. And one of those is actually uh, measuring the imbalance of the mass axially. For example, with a wheel, this is the ability to determine the difference between the inside and the outside of the wheel, whether or not there's an imbalance between those two sides. Um, using other accelerometer data and the gyro data, we could actually determine axially where this imbalance is on the object being spun. Um, this would require a lot of additional uh, calibration and testing, um, and it just, I don't think really matters for my purposes. Um, I know that being unbalanced axially can create a twisting torque, but I don't know how important this is on a non-steering uh, uh, rear wheel or on a turbo compressor wheel. Um, I also mentioned that the accelerometer values were unitless. Uh, 
Uh, this means I have no idea what their values actually mean other than high values are bad and low values are good. Well, we can calibrate this type of machine relatively easily by spinning something of a known amount of imbalance, uh, which gives us a scaling factor so that we can accurately say something like this wheel is 50 milligrams out of balance at X angle. Well, that really wraps it up for uh, this video. I mean, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, I'll go ahead and publish all the code and CAD to my GitHub. Um, like I said, this isn't a perfectly polished project, but I thought it was something that uh, you all might find interesting. And uh, that's all. Uh, take care and uh, stay safe out there.